And they're not home, they're homeless. They gotta find a way to survive. They have to get food, shelter. They, for them, it, it's surviving and with their newborn. Not the kind of thing you ever see on a Christmas card or at a Christmas play, but it's crucial because without this, there's no story, there's no salvation. This is the most universal birthday celebration on planet Earth. It's celebrated in every land in one way or another. And yet there's one people that, that are, have been known for not celebrating it, and yet it's so ironic because it's its own family. 2,000 years ago, he came to a Jewish town, a Jewish family. It's the most Jewish thing in the world. What is this all about? It's not about Santa Claus. It's not about, it's not about uh, presents. It's about the birth of the Messiah of Israel and the light of the world. The Hebrew prophet said that this one would be born, Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. It's not, when I first saw that in the Bible, I said, what is this, Catholic? I, what, what is it? I don't know. How did that get into the Hebrew Scriptures? Well, it's for all, it is born in Bethlehem. He become the light of the world. That is also what it says. So he has. Think about it. Every moment in this world is dated by the birth of this Jewish child. From the stock market in Wall Street to the communist in government in Beijing, they have to date everything by the birth of this Jewish child. Every moment, think about it, every moment of your life is dated by that. Every, every moment of your life you date by what its relation is to the birth of this Jewish child. It doesn't matter who you are. And it happens to be, I mean, think about it, here is the central life of this, of the, the life that has divided history, that is the central life on this planet, also happened to fulfill these prophecies that the Jewish Messiah had to fulfill. And he's become the light to the world. Your life is already related to him, no matter who you are. The key is when you enter into a real relationship, relating to him, and who, the one who was born into the world is actually born into you. And so... We're going to do something that goes back, that he would have recognized, that goes back to the time and the flavor. This is not Frosty the Snowman. This is not Elves. This is what in the time of Messiah, him being born. I want to lower the lights. We're going to give a little flavor of that, and that is, you see over there, that is the, that's not the Hanukkah menorah, that's the temple menorah. That's what it's all based on. This is seven lights. And that represents the light that's shining in the darkness, the light of God. And it's no accident that both Hanukkah and Christmas are about this theme of light shining in the darkness. And so what we're going to do, I, I've reminded you that the rabbis said that, well, don't ever light this until Messiah has come. So every year we make a point of lighting this one because Messiah has come. This is the sign of it. This is the seven branch menorah, the light of the world. And here are the actual prophecies from Israel. The prophets of Israel said Messiah will be this. Isaiah. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and be with child. And the name of the child shall be Immanuel. Emmanuel, God is with us. Isaiah said in Isaiah 9, for to us a child is born, a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be Wonderful, Wonderful. Pele, Counselor, Yoetz, Everlasting Father, El Gibor, the mighty God, Hasar Shalom, the Prince of Peace. And there shall be no end of his government or on the throne of David, for the Lord himself will establish this. And then the prophet Micah said this of the Messiah. Listen, whoever the Jewish Messiah is, Messiah, the light of the world, this has to be. He said this. Well, I'm going I'm to actually, actually going to say it. I'm going to do it in the original Hebrew and then, then in English. Viata Beit Lechem Ephrata Sair Lichiot Ba Alfe Yehudam Mimecheli Vatse Yetse Liot 
Moshe Israel U Mozartav Mi Kedem Mi Me But as for you, Beit Lechem, Bethlehem, from you will he go forth, who is to be ruler in Israel. From the smallest of clans, Bethlehem, though you be, his goings forth, his origins are from the ancient days, even from the days of eternity. Lord, we praise you and thank you this morning, this day. Lord, we thank you. You brought, you bring light where there was darkness, Lord. And you bring hope where there wasn't hope. You bless. Father, we thank you so much. We have you and you have come. And we bless you in the name above every name. The name of Yeshua, Jesus, Or HaOlam, the light of the world, Uchvod Yisrael, and the glory of Israel in his holy name. And all his people say, now Yosef, Joseph, who also went up from the Galil in Israel, the Galilee, from the city called Nitzeret, or Nazareth, to Yehuda, Judah, to the Ir David, the city of David, the king, which is called Beit Lechem, Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, in order to register with his wife, whose name was Miriam, Mary, who was betrothed to him and was pregnant. While they were there, the time came to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloths, laid him in a manger because there wasn't any room for them in the inn. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields, watching their flocks at night. And a malach, an angel, a malach Adonai, an angel of the Lord, suddenly appeared to them the glory of Adonai the Lord shone around them and they were very afraid and the angel said to them don't be afraid for behold I bring you good news of a great joy that will be for all the people for today in the Ir David the city of David there has been born for you a Moshiach a savior a redeemer who is Mashiach Messiah the anointed one Adonai the Lord miraculous night in Bethlehem. <clears throat> imagine if you were with, you were Joseph or Mary. And imagine if, we don't know, but imagine if they discovered the actual scriptures, the prophecies of this event in Isaiah, the child will be born, the son will be given. Isaiah 7, the virgin will conceive and the child will be called God with us. Micah 5, 2, you Bethlehem will be the place. Imagine they're talking to each other saying, look what's here. We're part of this. This is all that. It was prophesied for centuries and centuries, and it's being fulfilled now. It would have been so overwhelming. And now, here they are in Bethlehem, and they're overwhelmed. The, the, the shepherds, shepherds out of nowhere find them and say, you won't believe what happened. We had this, the, this appearance of the vision of angels, angels appearing, and they said, the Messiah is born today here. It's him. This baby is him wrapped up and they're overwhelmed, Joseph and Mary. That night in an obscure part of the earth outdoors in an animal feeding station, all these prophecies of the Hebrew scriptures of the Jewish Messiah of the light of the world are fulfilled in their midst and they're behold as they're looking at this newborn life. Miriam, the chosen woman of all women, Yosef, Joseph, the chosen man, this miraculous night, the nativity. And then what? We've had 2,000 years of celebrations of this and cards and gifts and parties and songs. And, but for Joseph and Mary, it wasn't all that. It was just one event once. We don't know they ever celebrated it. Did they have any idea? Did they have any idea that this little, this intimate private event would become the biggest event on the planet? There's, but what happened? For them, it was just one night of their life. The shepherds ultimately, they didn't think about a holiday. It was their night. It was the, what happened. The shepherds ultimately had a call at a night. They had to go back to their flocks. The angels sang. They finished the song, went back. 
It all faded. The night faded. The stars faded. The moon faded. It was over the night of miracles. And Joseph and Mary are left there in a town that's not their home and say, now what do we do? There's no nativity set there. There's no na we don't have any nativity set that talks about the next day, the day after, or the day after that. No Christmas play about that. But the day after was crucial because without the day after, there's nothing else. The, the story stops. There's no gospel. There's no salvation. The next, the ne you know, you know the, what would have been there, there would have been maybe some animals. That's it. And they're not home. They're homeless. They got to find a way to survive. They have to get food, shelter. They, for them, it, it's surviving and with their newborn. Not the kind of thing you ever see on a Christmas card or in a Christmas play. But it's crucial because without this, there's no story. There's no salvation. So the days go by and the miracle becomes increasingly something of a memory from the past. And, and it's obscured every day. There's new events that kind of push that out. Daily life. Joseph, what's he doing? He's making a living. Mary's taking care of the house, taking care of the, of the child, washing, clean, cleaning, preparing food. The night of miracles gets farther and farther away. We think of miracles, but we don't think of the day after. You know, the, the, what happened in Egypt, you know, the, the Hebrews were led out of Egypt. What, what happened changed their lives, but there's the miracle of the Red Sea. But not long after that, they forgot it. They set up the golden calf. They were ready to rise up against Moses. They forgot the miracle. Think of the demoniac, the guy who's possessed. He's dwelling in tombs. He's terrorizing everybody who's coming near. And one day, this Messiah appears on his shore, and he, he delivers him. And, but, and, but then now he's, now he's saved. He's in his right mind. Now, but then his life has to go on. Now he's got to make a living. See, when you're running around naked and screaming like a maniac, you don't have to make a living. You, no one expects you to. But now he's got to go job hunting. Imagine being interviewed if that was you. Have you ever had any mental instability? Ever, ever run around like a maniac naked? Well, I sort of, you know, he's no longer the demoniac. He's just, he's just Joe Smith, the ex-demoniac. He might have a wife and kids. Imagine his kids saying, Daddy, can you tell a story when you used to? So no, it's okay. They will forget about that. But, but if the miracle gets, gets, you know, the miracle is one day and then comes life. We have this idea in the Bible and you know, the miracles are all the time. They're regular. Well, if they were regular, they wouldn't be miracles. You see, that's what a miracle is. And so, you know, for Mary, you, you know, there's, there's two miracles at that time. There's the miracle of the appearance of the angel, and then there's the miracle of the event, the fulfillment, and that's it. As far as we know, there's no record of anything else for 30 years. Mary's life, 30 years of regular life, cleaning the, cleaning the house, starting the fire. Miracles are of heaven. It's an event from heaven that comes into earth. It's like, it's like an, an, uh, it, God is inserting something in earth. The blind see, the lame walk, the possessed deliver, the sea opens, the mountain quakes. And the essence of the miracle is heavenly, it, but it's coming to earth. It's like God throwing a stone onto the water of life. And the, it ripples, but then it kind of fades because, see, the, 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 the miracle becomes a day before and a day before that. The miracle is eternal, but, but it coming on earth, the manifestation gets, gets older. Even Elijah, who prayed for fire to come down, and it happened, and the heavens open up, and the drought ends, and in the following days, he's trembling. It's like he forgot everything, and he's ready to die, ready to give up. He forgot everything God did. He didn't keep the miracle that he himself was part of. In a strange way, that's what Christmas is like. It parallels it because Christmas for, again, there are people who celebrate, people who don't, but with Christmas, all their decorations go up, celebrations, get-togethers, ser services, gifts, parties, songs, people, food, relatives, the nativity scenes, and then the day ends. And then it's over, and yet, it, it, yet, yet in that sense, it actually replays what happened 2,000 years ago because Joseph and Mary left. The manger was empty. Nobody, has a, uh, nobody puts up an empty manger. But after that, they, they, they left. The rest of life is just as crucial as the day of the miracle. What they experienced that night wasn't just an experience. The real essence of the miracle isn't the experience of a miracle. It's the miracle of the experience. It's the reality. Miriam and Joseph, to them, Christmas wasn't an event. It was a reality that changed their life. It's a baby. The point wasn't to experience. It was, the point was the reality, the life. So with the others, you know, there's a crippled man. He gets healed. Suddenly he can walk. Years later, that event that healed him when he saw Messiah, and he said, get up and walk. 
That, that, that was a distant event, but the effect of it changed his life. The blind man, same thing. Man born blind. Messiah comes to him, and he's healed. He can see, and that, that story is so real because that guy is taken for interrogation, and he's sarcastic, which only, you read that event. It's an amazing thing. It happened. He was healed, and, 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 but the, the day would become an old day last year, year before, 10 years ago. But the reality changed his life. Now, did the blind man live a miraculous life? We don't know. I mean, that was a miracle, but we don't know. Even though he had a miracle, come to him. You see, it's human nature to get used to what you have, especially if it's good. Even if it's a miracle, you know that? You know, because I know people, I've, I've seen miracles. I know people have seen miracles. And yet, days go on, and then you kind of live like the regular thing, like as if it didn't happen. If you worked in Disney World, in Magic Kingdom, after a while, it wouldn't be the Magic Kingdom. It'd be your job and, and it would, you would it'd be all gone. You see, you know, we have people in this area who come, we have people who come, from the, come to the services almost every week from around the country. And we have people who come and say, wow, you live, in, you live near New York City. I've always dreamed of going there. And you think, why? We try to get away from there. You know, the Israelites had, had manna from heaven Manna from heaven. Imagine food. You don't have to go out. You don't have to order it. You don't have to pay for it. You just set up the table in the wilderness. Manna from heaven. You got dinner. Dinner served. But after a while, it happened every day. They got used to it. I mean, how much variety? They might, they, they, you know, filet of manna, <laughs> Kentucky fried manna, General Chow's manna, manicotti, Alaskan King manna, manna ball soup with some manna chevets, wine, you know. Manna from heaven. An awesome miracle, but after a while they're complaining about the accommodations. Even though the miracle was there, they lost it in their heart. When you take a miracle for granted, you lose it even if you have it. God gives experiences, and that's good, it's good. You know, feelings are part of, of our life in God, and so are experiences, but that's not the heart of it. The heart isn't experiences, it's the truth, it's reality. So many believers want experiences, but, and that, but experiences go up and down. You get the up, you get the down. But the truth doesn't go up and down. The truth is steadfast. That's why if you live by experiences and feelings, you go up and down. But if you live by the truth, you become strong. You become steadfast. See, it's not about the worship of the Lord. That's good, but it's about the Lord of the worship. Regardless of the worship, it's about the Lord. It's not about the holiday of the Lord. It's about the Lord of the holiday. If you got the holiday, do all your celebrating, but you don't have the center of it, it's nothing. Amen. The holiday ends. The service ends. But the, the God of the service doesn't end. He's not the God of just Sunday. He's the God of Monday morning. So what did Joseph and Mary do after the nativity? Did they pose for holiday cards? For, Wal for, for Hallmark? I said Walmart. Said Walmart. <laughs> Hallmark. Now they... They went to Jerusalem for the circumcision, or they did the circumcision. They went to Jerusalem then to fulfill what the law said because they had obligations. You see, God's life and God's miracles and God's touching your life doesn't exempt you from daily life or problems. It just the opposite gives you the power to deal with them and overcome them. Amen. What did Joseph and Mary do after Christmas? What did they do? They did the laundry, they took out the garbage. They raised a family. When the Hebrews left Egypt and there was a deluge of miracles, yet God didn't leave it that way. He said, from now on, keep this day every, keep this every day. He said, keep this so you never forget what I did for you. You never forget the miracle and where you went, where you were from, where you are, and how you got there. Hi, I'm Jonathan Kahn. Thanks for checking out my YouTube channel. I hope you were blessed with the video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Feel free to share your reactions with your comments and how you were blessed. And share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching. See you next time.